Hello everyone. Welcome to session 80 of Selenium training. In this session, guys, I am going to continue the live project. So far, guys, as part of the earlier sessions, we have automated the scenarios for registration functionality and uh, followed by login functionality and then the search functionality right these are the three areas we have created the scenarios for and we have implemented the automation scripts for them as part of registration functionality we created see we implemented four scenarios and for login also we implemented four scenarios and uh, for search also we implemented four scenarios but now guys in today's session, we are going to deal about orders functionality. And as part of this, I am going to automate an end to it, an end to end scenario. Unlike the above, unlike the above scenarios, guys, unlike the unlike this above, sorry, uh, as part of this search functionality, I implemented two. I wrote here as four. This is not four. This is two. Two scenarios. Four, four, two. Okay. But all these ten scenarios, guys. All these ten scenarios are like uh, it. It didn't take much time for us to create all these ten scenarios, guys. It's so very simple scenarios. But guys, as part of the orders functionality, I am going to implement an end-to-end -end scenario. A single scenario is going to take a lot of time, guys. It's going to touch a lot of areas in the application. Okay. The scenario that I'm going to demonstrate, implement or create automation scripts for, is going to take good time, guys. Unlike this 10 scenarios, this scenario is going to take good time. Okay. It's an end to end scenario, guys. Uh, end to end scenario is something like a real end user uses this kind of scenarios, guys. Okay. When, whenever someone, uh, someone wants to purchase a product, Okay, what he does. That's what is the end to end scenario in this case. Uh, what scenario I'm going to automate, I'm going to show you first. Uh, after that, only I will start automating the scenario. Okay, so as part of orders functionality, I am going to automate an end to end scenario. This is the scenario, guys, I am going to implement. Go to the application. We'll launch the application, guys, and after that, we'll try to log in. We'll try, we'll navigate to the login page and then log in. We'll provide the email and uh, we'll provide the password and click on login. After getting logged in, we'll search for a product, guys. Say Samsung Sync Master 941BW and click on the search button. The search in the search results will get this product. And uh, now I will add this particular product to cart, add to cart. So here one item will be displayed and here you see shopping cart, click on the shopping cart. So whatever the product I just added to the cart, right? You can see that in the shopping cart page like this. Now guys, if you have any details, you can enter, but uh, in this scenario, I'm going, not going to enter any of these details. Instead, I will directly click on checkout. I'll be taken to the checkout page. The checkout page, I need to provide the billing details. Uh, billing details are all auto populated, so you don't have to enter again. Instead, directly click on continue. Here, delivery details, you don't have to enter them again. Directly click on continue. Delivery method, by default, flat shipping rate is there. I will go with the default option by clicking continue. And payment method also, cash on delivery is by default selected. I will select the times and conditions and click on continue. And uh, finally, I got a confirm order uh, section. Okay. Uh, here also, I will say confirm order. After clicking on the confirm order, I should see this. Okay, your order has been placed. You should be taken to the success page and your order should be placed successfully. So this is the end to end scenario guys. Starting from login to the application to the placing of the order, I will be automating. Okay, as part of this end to end scenario, I will be doing that. Fine. So that is that is the scenario guys that whatever the scenario just now I demonstrated right. That's what I'm going to automate, guys. It, it's going to take, take time for this scenario. Okay. Fine. Let's get started then. Let's follow the below steps to continue, guys. 
So first of all, guys, in the existing framework where we created all these feature files and implemented them, right click on the feature files and select new file. Create a feature file name orders dot feature. Enter. So orders dot feature file got created. Feature. Scenarios. Related to placing orders. Okay. Scenarios. You can write anything. Orders, placing, scenarios, anything you can write. Okay. Here's a scenario. First scenario, colon. I'll say something like this. Whether verify whether the user is able to place orders. Okay. Verify whether the user is able to place orders. Given a login to the application and given a login to the application okay mm. so just give me a second uh, we'll see the feature file here we cross check the things in the first scenario end-to-end uh, -end scenarios are placing orders you can uh, yeah uh, this is what i can write uh, anything you can write here i can write end-to-end -end scenarios for placing orders okay and uh, coming to the scenario verify whether the user is able to place an order okay i log into the application when i add any product to bag and checkout when i add a product to bag and checkout and I place an order, then I should see that the order is successfully placed. Almost in this terms case, uh, we'll cross check. Uh, order is placed successfully. I place, I order, okay, everything is good. I should see that the order is placed successfully. Anything? You can do any of the ways okay in your own way fine this is what the scenario is uh, i'll annotate this scenario at the rate orders at the rate one something like this okay this is the feature file i have, to, have written guys so this is the one of the scenario in the feature file I have written uh, none of the steps are now implemented guys all the steps are new i log into the application add a, a product to the bag and check check out this is checkout and I place an order and then I should see that the order is placed successfully. All these four steps are new steps guys. I have never implemented all these four steps in any of the other feature files or scenarios, right? So what I will do next is, as you already know, so what I will do here is I will, I'll create a orders.java file first, okay? In the step definitions, I will create the similar, for orders feature file, I will be creating the orders.java file. Click on orders. Okay, I just created the orders. Now, guys, have to implement all these steps, but uh, I will not uh, do a lot of hard work and write everything from scratch. Instead, I will execute this non implemented steps. All the four steps are new steps, guys, anyhow. So, I will try to execute this scenario so that my Eclipse ID will generate the automatically generate the syntax for all these four steps in the output console, right? So, let's do that. Uh, what we have to do now? Open this runner.java. The runner.java, you have to modify this, guys. As part of the last scenario, we have tweaked it a bit. Now let's modify it. Here, say features is equal to class path. Here, say orders.feature and remove all the remaining things. It's not required. Okay, then uh, orders.feature file, class path is order. This will be same. And here, at the end, put a comma and say enter. Here say tax is equal to. Okay, tax is equal to. Here in the double quotes, provide at the rate orders 
these are the tags right for that particular scenario these are the tags so just provide this tag at the red one okay this particular first scenario will be in this scenario in the uh, in this particular orders feature file will be executed now because of this configurations now guys right click on the arna.java run as gain a test none of the steps are now implemented guys we'll get four implementations okay auto generated syntax for four of the implementation so let's see nothing will happen it will not even launch the application okay just a browser got open you see all the uh, syntax for all the i mean auto generated code for all the steps to be implemented got displayed here in the output copy all these things all these four things and go to orders.java which i have recently created paste it there given import one of the annotation import given and change it to star so that uh, you don't have to implement when 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 you don't have to import for each and everything so simply put star everything will be imported you see all the errors got resolved given when i add a product to bag and check out and this is and guys in the in the feature file this is and and i place an order then i should see that the order is placed successfully so tweak the unnecessary things uh, remove the unnecessary things guys through through we'll just remove this and also this comment and this throw news all those things just remove them okay make the methods empty okay now all the four steps need to be implemented one after the other one let's start with the first step guys given i log in to the application given i log in to the application what do you have to do here guys so first of all guys whenever you execute this it should it should launch the application right it should open the application the browser will launch guys even if i run this one now if i run this particular thing now without any code what will happen let's see just run the runner.java observe that blank browser will be opened but application will not be opened guys you see when i run this the blank browser window without any url opened will be opened and closed right so what i have to do now i need to open the application in that uh, open browser for that guys i have to write something like this base dot reader uh, base dot driver guys okay base dot driver dot get okay this driver is created in the base class as you already know driver is there in the base class is uh, created in the base class this driver dot get i can say right so driver dot get base dot driver dot get here i need to provide the application url but guys i want to read the application url from the config.properties okay i want to read the application url from config properties if you open the config properties application url is already provided i want to get the url from here guys so how to how how to read the application url from the config properties for that guys at the framework level see there's something known as in the base.java the base first of all in base.java we have created something known as configuration reader just created a variable for this configuration reader what we are assigning to this reader guys will come to there the configuration reader get url url is there which is an interface go to property file reader the property file reader which is implementing the configuration reader okay so all the high level status methods should be implemented in the property file reader and here in the constructor of the property file reader you are assigning the here somewhere okay where is that yeah sorry so i think in the hooks i guess in the hooks you see what is that okay you see here base dot reader is equal to new property file reader okay you are you are assigning the reader variable of the base class with the property file reader object property file reader object that means whatever this base here is the reader guys you are assigning the reader with, uh, with the object of the property file reader 
okay property file reader is implementing the configuration reader so it has implement all the methods here get real get browser and all so when you assign the object of the property file reader to the reader uh, property file reader class to the reader variable of the base class to the reader re re reader variable of the reference of the base class you are assigning the object of the property file reader in that case using that reader guys you can access any of these methods right reader reader will act as an object here reader using this class object you can access any of these methods get url get browser so i will do the same thing as go to the, go back to the orders.java here i have to get the user url so i will say base dot sorry not base yeah base only In the base we have the reader right so from base dot reader i will say so base dot reader reader is nothing but the object of which class property file reader so you can when you say reader dot you will get all the uh, methods of this property file reader so get url get browser all those things you will get simply say get url okay like this so when you say in the property file reader what, what actually is the get url doing it is reading the url from the it is re reading the url from the config properties guys you can see you can see config.properties path is there here properties file is loaded with this config.properties path this path so it this using this properties object properties object you can access the property values if you say url if you say url here the value of the url will be retrieved guys the value of the url will be retrieved and it will be returned when you call this get url it will return the string which is nothing but the application url read from this properties file okay so this is a framework level guys you don't have to dig too much simply say base dot driver dot get and uh, in, in that this will retrieve the url of the application so base dot driver dot get of application url okay and also one more thing guys i don't want to see this kind of code in the implementation this user cannot understand that's fine so better i want to have this keep this code uh, somewhere guys okay i log into the application base dot driver dot get uh, i want to i want to create a reusable method for this one guys okay i want to create a, a reusable method for this where i have to create the reusable method so if i go to my frameworks there is something known as browser.java browser level methods are there here uh, at the framework level someone has already created like maximize a browser uh, take screenshots in the current uh, browser instance start the browser okay like this many methods are there apart from that i want to create one more method here okay that's nothing but public static void open application url Yes, a reusable method I am creating is instead of writing that code every time. If ever I want to open the application at any point of time, I can call this method. I am just implementing this method at the framework level. Okay. So here I will write. I will simply do one thing. I will go to the orders dot Java and I will cut this line from here and paste into this uh, open application. That's it. Okay. Base dot driver dot get base dot driver dot reader dot get URL. That's it. Okay. So whenever I need need to open the application, I will say Control Shift O. So all the required import statements will be filtered. Okay. Now guys, what I will do? What I have to do? Since in the browser dot Java, I created a user method for opening the application, and it's also static type. That means with the help of browser class, we can call this method, right? So simply in orders dot Java, I will say base. Oh, sorry, mm, I will say browser dot browser dot open application url that's it this this sounds very good right instead of uh, saying base dot reader dot uh, base dot driver dot get and inside that again base dot uh, reader dot get url all those stuff instead of that simply call this method whenever you want to open the application url in the browser simply call this up user method from now onwards so this is one thing i did after opening the application so Let's assume that uh, at this point of time, let's assume that uh, we we have reached up to this point. Okay, we have opened the application. When this particular statement will get executed, it will open this application in the open browser. Next thing is that I need to navigate to the login page. I want to navigate to the login page. Uh, so what I have to do? From there, I have to say these things are already implemented as part of the earlier scenario. So I will write the same code. I will say. I need to click on. I need to click on the login option in uh, my account. My account option in the header section, and after that, login option in the header section. 
when i click on that it will take me to the login page right so for that guys i will say something like this uh, elements dot click off which section those things are in the header section header section header section is already we have this header section here if you remember so header section dot as part of the earlier scenarios we created them my account link header we have to click on my account link of the header section right similarly i have to say elements dot click off header section dot login option okay you'll click on my account link of the header section and login option of the header section so when when these two steps are executed it will the user will be taken to the login page anyhow right and for this also guys i want to create a reusable method anytime if i want to navigate to the login page i can actually call this uh, two steps right so where i have to execute this where i have to create the reusable method since this actions belong to the header section i want to create this reusable method in the header section open this header section and in that create a reusable method public static void navigate to login page simple okay navigate to login page in this copy paste this to cut and paste this to statements that's it nothing more than that okay anyhow my account link is there here in this uh, header section only we have this my account element and login also is there here only so you can you can ignore these things guys you can either keep it or you can ignore both things will work here okay it's up to you if you want to remove this you can remove this because these two elements belong to the same class so why to again call with the help of this class name and then call the static elements directly you can have them here okay like this now guys let's uh, navigate to login page so what i will do here is in the orders page i will say say control shift to again now here say headers section dot navigate to login page so it will take you to the login page right after that i need to log into the application i need to log into the application for that i need to enter the email address here password here and click on the login button if you remember guys as part of the earlier sessions we have the scenarios related to the login like this login dot feature but in all the scenarios guys we have passed the username and password right if i have to log into the application i have i have been passing the username and password values you see from the feature file i was passing the username and from the feature file itself i am passing the password but guys now i don't want to if you observe this orders dot feature file i nowhere passing the username and password right i'm directly saying i i log into the application using which username and password i'm not passing from the feature file then how guys then how what I have to do now so i'm not passing the username and password from the orders dot feature uh, like feature file scenario of the feature file then how can i get the username and password for that guys i want to take a different road in this particular scenario okay i don't want to pass the username and password from the feature files scenarios in the feature files rather i want to keep my username and password in the config.properties files here guys only three values are there so far that is url and browser is chrome and page load time is 240 so apart from that i want to create some new properties that is username is equal to ravikiran1 at the rate gmail.com password is equal to rkiran okay like this guys like this okay ravi.kiran at the rate gmail.com rkiran done that's it okay so we have the properties the properties file we have the required properties this values we need to read guys this values we need to read we have to tweak the framework in such a way that there should be a mechanism for reading these values from the properties files okay i will explain you how to create the mechanism for reading this username and password from this properties file okay okay let me close unnecessary things okay these things are fine so now guys uh, these are the two properties i added for that guys i will go to configuration reader first okay first i will go to the configuration reader for the newly added properties i will add two more methods okay this is how you have to change the framework guys whenever you want to read more properties 
add something like this in your framework in this framework public return type is string get user name okay like this this is an interface guys so methods will not be implemented here methods will not have any code only the body will be there only the head will be there body section will not be there for any of the methods here and at same time create one more uh, method statement here method head, uh, head statement here that is get password that's it so save it immediately when you save it you will get an error in this property file reader because this property file reader is implementing this configuration reader so property file reader class is implementing this configuration reader that that means that in the con whatever the things that are created at high level this is an interface configuration reader is an interface guys whatever the uh, methods uh, declared at the high level should be compulsory implemented in this child uh, child class of this configuration reader interface so that's why you are getting the error simple guys so there are all the three methods of the configuration are already implemented so now guys over the mouse and you will get this add an un un unimplemented steps in eclipse id just click that you will get these two methods which need to be implemented okay don't have to write from scratch eclipse will auto generate the code for you when you do this same thing remove these unnecessary codes annotations and codes so get username and get password the return type is string so you are not giving anything so here say simple return return properties okay this properties guys this property is a object reference of this config.properties file this config.properties file in which we have this two newly added properties okay so i am going to read with the help of this object reference i am going to read them properties dot properties dot get property properties dot get property of what i need to get guys i need to retrieve the username so in the properties we have this property name and property value so here here i need to give the property name guys that is here url is the property name so when i uh, sorry not url uh, username 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 is a property name when i give the username as a property name this property get property method of the properties will retrieve the will go and check the username in the config.properties file uh, so what is the value of this username ravi dot kiran one at the rate gmail dot com so it will get this value get property will get the ravi dot kiran one value and it will return this whenever this method is called that particular e email address will be passed returned okay similarly for password also you have to say return properties dot get property of what uh, in the double quotes provide something in double quotes provide the this particular property that is password property provide this password property here whenever this method is called it will it will read the password from this uh, config dot properties file and return the password okay so like that guys we have we have something implemented at the framework level fine uh, when we are going to call and all those stuff we can see later let's go back to the orders orders dot java let's close all this stuff orders here it is look we are at the login page and i need to enter the username and password so here i need to retrieve the data from the properties file and enter into this thing so for that i will do one thing i'll say elements dot elements uh, dot uh, i will say this app operation is type text right you have to type the you have to type the email address into this you have to type the email address into this email address field so type text i will say element data what is the data i'll tell what is the element in which we have to type the text what is the element L login page the element is there on the login page so you already provided that particular uh, email id field in this login page if you open this login page you see email field is already web element for the email field is already created in the login page in the as part of the earlier sessions login page dot email field i will say this is a web element and in that we need to pass we need to enter the data that data i want to read from the properties file so here i have to say something what is that here i have to read the data from the properties file so in order to read the data from the properties file i just need to call in the properties file reader i just need to call get username method 
okay in order to call this get username method of the property which, which is nothing but a method of the property file reader okay this property file reader okay this property file reader there is a variable guys to which we are assigning these things right there is nothing but the reader that's nothing but the reader that is that is done in the hooks class or somewhere hooks class i guess uh, you see base dot reader is equal to new property file reader so reader is the object of this property file reader class only you, using that object you can call this method so for that guys you have to do something here base dot reader dot get you see now you are getting username and password in this list earlier you used to get get url get browser and other things but now you are getting get username i tweak the framework in a bit such that you can access the get your get username using the base of reader similarly elements dot type text elements dot type text web element comma data here again login page dot password field in this again we need to pass the data the password need to be read from the which file properties file so that is base dot reader dot get password these are the two lines please. these are the two lines and one more thing we need to do is we have to click on the enter button uh, i mean we need to click on after entering the email address and password into these fields i need to click on the login button for that i will say elements dot click login page dot login button these are the three steps so i don't want to have these three steps in this uh, step implementation guys instead i want to create a reusable method for these things since all these three statements belong to the login page what i will do is i will open the login page and create a reusable method inside that we already have a do login page but similarly i am going to create another do login page in that in the first do login page we are passing the email address and password but in this do login page a do login method we will not pass any email or password directly the email and password will be read from the which file properties file so public static void again same name do login but uh, this is going to be overloading concept okay where you can have the same name but different properties in the same class for the method so i am going to use that technique so here go to the orders.java and uh, cut all these three statements and uh, put into those login page reusable method okay now guys uh, here for the web elements this is a web element this is another web element and this is another web element we are already in the login page so do we need to call again this web elements with the help of the login page not required right login page dot email field login page dot password we are already inside the login page why we have to again call with the help of that simply remove this directly put the password field since this all these web elements belong to the same class you can directly access them that instead of uh, calling the static uh, static technique okay so like this you can say okay like it like this you can do fine now guys uh go to the orders control shift o unwanted Im implementations import statements will be removed anyhow and when you say control shift o together now guys i need to call the from the login page i need to call the do login method without any parameters with parameters don't do without parameters without parameters method will read the data from the read the username and password from which file config.properties file config.properties file okay so do login is also done i think this should be fine uh, open application url navigate to login page and log into the application so when execute these things when execute this uh, this particular step what will happen it will type this click on login this will happen okay it will open the application url it will navigate to the login page and it will come to the uh, it will login finally these are the three steps that you need to implement these are all the three reusable methods guys and one more thing once you are done with each and every step make sure that what are the different things you are using inside that uh, for that just create the objects for example all these pages or sections okay for all these things you need to create the objects inside the same class for you are using header sections here so create an object for the header sections header section okay done another uh, thing that you are using is the login page so just create an object for the login page so that their constructors will be called guys when the constructors are called then only 
the web elements will be initialized in in this particular framework otherwise web elements of this uh, different pages will not be initialized okay if you don't create an object those things will not be initialized fine uh, that's done that's good uh, next thing is that i add a product to bag and checkout okay i add a product to bag and checkout after after coming to this login page i need to add a product to bag and checkout so now to add a, uh, add a product to bag first i need to do something like this i want to search for a product okay samsung sing master 941b and click on the search button after clicking on the search button i will get the product right those things i need to do first i need to search for a product first okay you know to add a product to bag i need to search for a product for that i will do something like this uh, i will elements dot type text uh, this particular element belongs to which section header section so i will say header section dot search box field into the search box field i need to i need to provide the product name i need to enter the product name that is samsung sync master i need to enter into the search box field but guys from the feature file i am not passing any product name i had a product to bag i am saying but i am not specifically passing any product name to this key, uh, from the feature file so what I have to do guys same thing which i have done for the login to the application without providing username and password right same thing i need to do it for the product also for that first step is that i need to go to config.properties and uh, i need to add a new property that is product product is equal to samsung sync master 941bw okay save it the property is there now property is there now but there is no mechanism to read these properties from this uh, config.properties file for that guys i will go to the configuration reader first which is an interface in that i will create a new uh, high level method without any body string get product simple okay get product is there now and uh, this product need to be this high level implementation need to be implemented in this uh, property file reader which implements this configuration ready import this add an unimplemented method so you will get this auto generated remove this override same process which i have followed for the get username and get password here get product is the difference so here i will say return return properties dot get property of in this double quotes put a semicolon at the end what is the property name i need to provide go to config dot properties and in that copy this product name and uh, come to the project file configurations and paste it here that's it you don't have to do not access this method you have to you, you do that with the help of the reader which is nothing but a uh, which is reader a reader variable which is uh, created in the base class so which has the object of the configuration reader uh, property file reader so what i have to do here is uh, i have to say base dot reader dot get product like this okay how to take the framework a bit guys uh, to get these things done okay done get product and then this product whatever you read from the properties file that is samsung sync master 941b will be typed into the search box field after that i have to click on the search button elements dot type text elements dot uh, type text header section dot search button right search button in this sorry i just did a mistake uh, this is like elements dot not type text it's click okay you need to click on the button headers section dot search button done okay so this will search this will search for the product okay this will search for the product i want to create a reusable method for this guys i want to create the reusable method for these two statements so for that guys uh, where i have to create this in the header section only i need to create the these two statements belong to the header section okay you have you, you have created the web elements in the header section so it's better that you can create the reusable method for these two statements in which method in which uh, class header section class only so just open the header section class from here and from the pages package and here create a reusable method that is public static void search a product okay or search product 
here do one thing copy uh, cut these two statements from here and paste it to here okay paste it to here that's it and search box field belongs to the same class and uh, search button also belongs to the same class so you don't have to call with the help of the class name now directly access this web elements from this same class this is one thing after that the orders dot java i will say first thing is that header section dot search product the first operation will be this will search for the product what it will do it will type samsung it will read the samsung sync master product value product name from the properties file and type it here and after that it will click on the search button you will get a search results right next thing is that after i search for the product i need to add the product to back how to add the product to back here if you come down there is an option called add to cart using this you can add the product to this particular bag or shopping cart okay bag or shopping cart so for that guys you need to uh, click on this option add to cart option you need to click after searching you need to click on this add to cart option so right click inspect this add to cart option first of all this add to cart option is displayed in the search results page okay it's getting displayed in the search results page so in the search results page you need to create a web element for this add to cart option okay directory or directory so how many are there add to cart uh, simply say something like this how to locate this how to click on this add to cart say control f double slash span text contains is equal to add add to cart single quotes here something is missing here let me inspect it again okay this is add to cart okay double slash span text is equal text and text is equal to add to cart now it's locating guys now it's loading locating and uh, for example this there may be if you search for a product guys there is a possibility that more products may be displayed right so in that case add to cart option will be like many or to cart options will be there so for that i want to go with the first add to cart option so i will say one first first add to cart option if there are multiple products displayed it will only click on the first add to cart option copy this where i have to create this the search results page guys this is a section of the search results the search results page so go to the earlier created search results page in the search results page create a new web element that is public static web element first this is the first guys first add to cart option okay first add to cart option at the right find by is nothing but x path is nothing but the x path that's it again okay, done now guys i need to click on this first add to cart option right so i'll go to the address here say uh, elements dot click here say which page search results page in that we need to click on first add to cart option okay first add to cart option now after clicking on this add to cart option i need to navigate to the checkout page okay i need to navigate to the checkout page so for this guys you can uh, create a reusable method if you want okay so let's see okay okay create a reusable method guys uh, how to create this wrongly clicked just give a second so for this statement i want to create a reusable method 
okay i don't want to have this kind of statement in my what you call implement uh, step definitions so rather i want to have these things in the respective classes so this is a search results page and search results page i need to create a review method having these things okay so go to the, uh, this is search results page in that let me create some review method that is public uh, static void uh, add first product product to cart add first product in the search results to cart this is a reusable method guys which i am going to create and in this i need to from order i need to cut this statement and put into the search results that's it and uh, this first add to cart option belongs to the same class so you don't have to call with the help of the class name simply remove this directly accessible from the same class so go to the orders now say now say search results page dot add first product in the search results to cart okay add first product in the search results to cart this how you have to change your uh, method of writing the things these things will look good readable also now guys one more thing uh, after adding the first product in search results to cart what is the next step guys after adding the first results to cart what is the next step we will do we will navigate to the shopping cart page we are, we already added this this particular product to shopping cart okay shopping cart or bag add product to cart or shopping cart so if i click on the shopping cart i will be taken to the shopping cart page so i just simply need to click on this shopping cart this shopping cart option belongs to header section right this shopping cart inspect the shopping cart i need to create a web element for this shopping cart okay it is a hyperlink so span class ends with uh, something and shopping cart so let's see what i can do Control F. Double slash span. Okay. Inspect it again. Right click inspect. Shopping cart. Copy this. Control F. Spam. Text span is equal. Text is equal to shopping cart. So it's locating this option, right? It's locating this option. So copy this XPath and go to which which area of the shopping cart belongs to header section. So go to the header section, guys. Go to the header section. Header section class and in that create a new web element. Public static web element. Uh, view shopping cart view shopping cart option as the rate find by spot is equal to whatever the export we created i will paste it here that's it that's it now go to the uh, go to the order here tells you here do something i need to click right elements dot click off which which section i need to click header section right header section in that i need to click on view shopping cart option so this is a statement guys when you execute this statement it will click on the view shopping cart option so instead of having this statement here i will create a reuse method for this one also okay i will create a reuse method for navigating to shopping cart page so where i have to create the reuse method in the same sec header section Header section. I need to create a reuse method. A reuse method that is public static wide. Uh, I will name this method as navigate to shopping cart page. Simple. In this, I need to copy this 
cut this statement from here and paste into this thing okay and uh, this view shopping cart option is already created in the headers header section class only you also you don't need this class name to access so done directly you can access so from orders you simply need to say headers section dot navigate to shopping cart h that's it this is again the same thing uh, and uh, now after uh, so i will simply click on the shopping cart it will take me to the shopping cart page like this shopping cart page like this next thing i will do is i will not do any changes to these things simply in the shopping cart this is the shopping cart page guys this is the shopping cart page in the shopping cart i will directly click on the checkout button okay you know to click on the checkout button i need to inspect this checkout button so this is a link text so where exactly the checkout button is there it's there in the shopping cart page do we have the shopping cart page in our framework so far did i create any shop page known as shopping cart page here account success forgot password enter login my account to register shopping cart page is not there guys so let's create one uh, right click on the pages package and say new uh, class this is nothing but shopping cart page create a new shopping cart page so that you can create the web elements of that particular page in this shopping cart page public static web element what is that web element guys the web element name is nothing but the checkout button so is nothing but a uh, checkout button at the rate find by so this is a link text when i inspected this checkout button it is nothing but a link text copy this hanger tag link text copy this text inside the tag and say link text is equal to paste it here that's it import this at the rate find by and uh, web element both done both are done now so one thing let's go back let's uh, i need to check out right i need to click on the check out button then this particular step will be completed so shopping cart page you created the web element so from the orders so in order to uh, in order after creating the web elements what you have to do you need to create a constructor here right so that this web element can be initialized when object is created for this class you already know this uh, page factory dot init elements base dot driver and this this class only okay initialize this class elements in this particular class import this base from the base package then now guys uh, things are good so go to the orders now you need to click on the the checkout page you need to click on that checkout button some issue here what is that issue save it yeah, it's resolved already the shopping cart page we have this uh, checkout button so for that i will create something like this elements dot click off which element shopping cart page dot checkout button this will when you click on the checkout you will be taken to the which page from shopping cart page you will be taken to the checkout page okay in the checkout place you can place the order guys uh, this is from shopping cart you will be taken to the checkout page so guys elements dot click of shopping cart page dot checkout button so instead of writing this kind of statement here okay instead of writing this kind of stating statement here i'll create a reusable method uh, reuse method for this uh, checkout okay so where i have to create the reusable method inside the shopping cart page only what is shopping cart cart page and say public static void navigate to checkout page and here say copy this uh, cut this statement from here and paste into this uh, class okay done that's it okay now here in the orders dot java here simply say shopping cart page dot navigate to checkout page that's it okay that's it guys uh, so uh, these four statements will add uh, search for a product add it to bag and then check out okay now now guys uh, this uh, implementation of this particular uh, step is completed but 
before going to the next step you need to add objects of this all these four classes here if they are not already there header section object is already there so search results page it's not there so let's create an object for search results page uh header section is already there shopping cart page not there copy this done so that's it about the second step implementation now let's go to the third step that is i place an order so after you click on the checkout button you will be taken to the checkout page right taken to the checkout page now you need to place the order so you need to place the order you need to place the order first i need to click on this uh, in the under the billing details i need to click on this continue button okay this page is nothing but the checkout page guys this page is nothing but the checkout page this button is there on the checkout page so i need to click on this uh, continue button right click inspect you need to create a web element for this continue button this particular button is there in the checkout page so in order to add this web element to this uh, checkout page first i need to have the checkout page in my framework right so do i have any checkout page here no guys i don't have any checkout page so right click on this pages package and say new class checkout page in this i need to create the web element for the continue button public static web element continue button under which section this is billing details okay continue button of billing details section like this i am creating a web element import this web element at the right find by inspect this web uh, continue button now so this has an id guys this particular button has an id that is button payment address copy this id and uh, come to here and say id is equal to test that's it import this at the right find by now is the checkout page i added this but i need to create a constructor now public public uh, checkout page to initialize this web element i need to create a constructor having the same name of the class page factory dot init elements base dot driver followed by this done import this base from base package done now go to the orders here i need to say i need to first thing is that i need to click on the elements dot click which page checkout page dot continue button of the billing detail section okay first statement is this one after that so uh, let me click on the continue button after that again some delivery detail section has opened and in that also you see another continue button which is there on the same checkout page so i need to create a web element for this continue button also in the checkout page right click inspect of, uh, inspect this continue button it has id guys button shipping address is id copy this id go to the same checkout page create another web element for the next uh, continue button continue button of which page delivery details section delivery details section here again at the rate find by id is equal to test that's it i need to click on this continue button right i need to click on this uh, second continue button for that in the orders elements dot click which page checkout page continue button of delivery details section done so i will click on this continue button now on clicking on the continue button of the delivery details delivery method section got opened and again you see another continue button here also again you will see another continue button in the delivery method section also so in order to create this web element again i need to go to the checkout page and create the web element for this one also right click inspect this continue this one also has an id that is button shipping method is id so copy that id and go to the head uh, checkout page in that say public static third web element continue button of which may, uh, delivery method this is above one is the delivery details this is the delivery method guys method section okay and it's at the rate find by id is equal to whatever the id i just copied 
that is the one here uh, payment address here shipping address here is the shipping method go to the orders now say elements dot click checkout page dot continue button for delivery method i guess delivery details delivery method okay delivery method just click on the continue button that is also done now payments method uh, section got open here before clicking continue i'll click i'll select this uh, terms and condition checkbox and then click on the continue this is a mandatory fields guys so you need to select this option and then click on the continue button in order to select this checkbox option this checkbox option is also there in the checkout page so i need to create a web element for this terms and condition checkbox option in the same checkout page right click on this inspect this so name some name tag name name attribute is there that is uh, the name value is agree copy this agree and go to this checkout page create a web element uh, for that uh, terms and conditions checkbox option terms and conditions checkbox that is defined by name is equal to that's it okay so from the orders you have to say elements dot click off checkout page but uh, checkout page dot terms and condition checkbox that's it uh, now go to the again after selecting this checkbox option after selecting this checkbox option i need to click on this continue button so inspect this continue button it uh, this continue button has an id guys button payment method copy this id and create a web element in the same checkout page like this public static web element continue button of payment details section right payment method section it's not details it's method payments method section at the rate find by id is equal to paste this id whatever the id i copied for this element i just pasted it in the orders i will say again elements dot click checkout page dot continue method uh, continue button of payment method section so after selecting this i'll click on the continue button now the last section that is confirm order i i see some confirm button okay i see some confirm order button so in order to click on this confirm order button i need to inspect this this button is also there in the checkout page so i'll take the id id value of this but a button uh, confirm button and then i will go to the checkout page and create a web element for that also public static web element confirm order button at the rate find by id is equal to done here in orders dot java say elements dot click off checkout page dot confirm order button that's it all the things are done when you click on confirm order you will be taken to the order success page order success page okay you will come to this later for now you have to place an order you are using this statements guys you have you can place an order you have placed an order so i don't want to see all these steps here guys instead in the checkout page i will create a reuse method okay with the name of placing an order okay place an order method go to the checkout page create a reuse method now public static void place and order at the rate find by uh, sorry uh, it's not and uh, this is the thing come to the orders dot java and uh, cut all the statements and put into this reusable method called place an order save it now from the orders page from the orders page here say checkout page dot place an order that's it single statement okay it has all the operations to be performed so so before going to the next step let's say whether i have created an object for this checkout page in this class or not you see this checkout page class object is not there so copy this checkout page 
and uh, paste it here. Say checkout page is equal to new checkout page. Just create an object. That's it. Now, guys, the last step that we need to implement. I should see that the order is placed successfully. So, how can you confirm that the order is placed successfully? You have to say assert dot assert to sorry assert dot assert true boolean condition if you get this kind of uh, situation just remove this import statement over it separately and then import this org dot unit done in this what i need to assert guys i need to assert whether this success breadcrumb is displayed or not if i see the success breadcrumb then i can confirm that the order is placed okay i need to i need to uh, check whether this particular success breadcrumb is displayed using the automation script so in order to create the success breadcrumb this is a which page guys this is orders order success page or checkout success page or order success page so for that i will create a new class uh, new page guys new class page that is uh, you don't have order success page here let's create a new class known as orders order success page in this i will create a web element for this web uh, breadcrumb guys success breadcrumb inspect this uh, success breadcrumb this is a link text guys copy this link text success and here say public static web element uh, public static web element success breadcrumb okay so that's not, that's called as breadcrumb guys whatever you are seeing on the page is nothing but a breadcrumb and uh, it has link text right link text is equal to this is a value control v import import sorry this is nothing but a breadcrumb guys whatever you are seeing here this section is known as a breadcrumb okay general terminology we use for uh, calling this kind of things navigation things is nothing but a breadcrumb so success is a breadcrumb which we created a web element for so immediately you have to create a constructor guys to initialize this web elements in this particular page uh, public order uh, success page the constructor name which is equal to the class name page factory dot init elements page dot driver and then this import this base from base package done now guys that's it uh, so you need to verify whether this uh, success breadcrumb is available or not go to the orders dot java here say elements dot is displayed elements dot is displayed where is the element guys in the order success page right order success page dot success breadcrumb that's it guys asset dot asset you can keep the statement not a problem you don't have to create a user method for asset statements fine uh, now the last step is also implemented but uh, before before actually ending it uh, you have to check whether you need to create objects for any of the classes uh, so in this page order success page is one of the class that you have to create objects for so create an object for order success page is equal to new order success page done that's it so we are done with the implementation of all the steps guys all the steps are now ready close all the stuff which is not necessary for you that's it okay so successfully we have implemented a end to end scenario guys for replacing an order okay so if we execute this scenario now in this orders dot feature file the complete end to end scenario will be executed from starting to the big ending okay so for that go to the runner.java and modify this uh, if if required orders dot feature is something already there and orders one is or also the tags are correct simply run this runner.java so that uh, you will see whether our scripts are working whether this implemented scenario is working properly or not right click on the runner.java and say run as jnet test save it okay let's see whether this end to end scenario is working fine or not uh, okay browser got opened application need to be opened in this application and this open browser yeah it opened it need to navigate to the login page it need to uh, log into the application 
after that you need to search for samsung sim master add to the bag and uh, go to the shopping cart then from checkout page click on continue buttons and all confirm the order somehow it got failed there is something that has failed let's find out what actually went wrong so out of three four steps only three passed and one failed uh, there is some issue in the script guys uh, the issue is nothing but no such element unable to locate element okay i got the issue guys uh, the reason for this issue is that by the time it is trying to locate that particular element that success breadcrumb this particular order, order success page dot uh, success breadcrumb guys by the time it's able to, uh, it's uh, it's about to find the success breadcrumb it's very fast our automation script is very fast and uh, it's not waiting for this element to appear before that it's trying to validate whether this element is there or not that's the main problem so for that guys you can do something like this uh, you, you can use a framework concept like wait uh, waits is implemented here you see waits.java is also part of the framework in the framework if you want to wait for some time if you want to wait until element is located how much time you want to wait 10 seconds you 10 here fast in here rebelment for which element you want to wait that success bread from i want to wait so it will it will wait guys okay you can call this method from this waits class it is a static method waits dot wait until element located simply go to order dot java before this statement simply write waits dot wait until element located and uh, give the time as 10 seconds give 10 that means 10 seconds and element is nothing but this order success page dot uh, success breadcrumb is the element okay okay now you you are waiting guys this time you are waiting for the success breadcrumb before actually checking whether it is displayed or not you will wait for 10 seconds after that only you will check for the display of that element now let's run it again guys i just simply added the wait statement right click on the runner.java and say, simply say runner uh, the unit test let's see this time the scenario should pass okay it will navigate to the login page log into the application search for the product add the product to bag and shop, view shopping cart check out and uh, it will keep on continuing and uh, finally click on the confirm order button and then press the order this time you see it, it got passed after after adding a waiting statement it got passed right so the complete scenario end-to-end -end scenario was we were able to execute the complete end-to-end -end scenario guys this is the only scenario that i am going to explain as part of this orders dot feature if you uh, feel that you can create more order scenarios end-to-end -end scenarios for this orders as guys you are feel free to create on your own and try to create such kind of scenarios in the feature file and try to implement them on your own guys okay that will help you uh, that will help you in practicing the stuff you can simply create more scenarios in this orders dot feature file many lot of possibilities are there okay here so you can create out of your creative creativity you can create any number of scenarios for this kind of end-to-end -end scenarios here and try to implement them for practice purpose okay so now we'll do something before closing up uh, we'll do something so we are able to implement all the steps right and we are able to execute the scenario only one scenario is there individual execution is already done but i want to execute all the scenarios in all the feature files now uh, that is restart feature file login feature file search feature file and orders feature file all these feature files so here only here in this orders functionality we have only one scenario right orders functionality we have implemented one scenario so total how many four plus four plus two is ten and eleven scenarios total eleven scenarios we automated as part of this live project guys the final scenario which will be automating okay automated so complete eleven scenarios exist in this live project guys so far uh, so let's do one thing uh, we will change the runner.java class uh, in such a way that uh, we, in this particular runner will execute all the scenarios in all the feature files. So, copy this last part thing in the double quotes, put a comma, enter here, say register.feature file. Orders feature file is already there. So, register.feature file again, say comma and put paste it here and login.feature file this is another feature file and put a comma and enter. And this time it is search.feature file. So all the feature files are not covered. I don't want to have a specific tags. Remove this tags along with this comma. Okay, done. Save it. 
now run this runner.java it will execute all the feature file all the scenarios in all the feature file that is complete 11 scenarios will be executed now guys right click on the runner.java and say change text so all the 11 scenarios should be automated uh, should be executed now First scenario is completed. Second scenario, this is login scenario, it seems. Total 11 scenarios will be executed one after the another one, guys, as per our configurations in the runner.java. Runner so, and all the scenarios should get passed. Okay, should get passed. There should not be any issues. Yeah. So guys, uh, you see all the 11 scenarios got passed and uh, out of all for, uh, for 11 scenarios, there are 50 steps completely. There are 50 steps for this 11 scenarios and it took 2 minutes, 23 seconds to complete all the execution of all the scenarios. Okay. So that's how we are able to execute all the scenarios. Now, since the things are very good for us, uh, what I will do here is I will update the, uh, this local code into the GitHub repository guys. Okay. As I, I have been doing this for last two to three sessions, I'm doing the same thing, right? Once everything is working well, feature file by feature file, I'm uploading all the automation, updated automation code to the github.com, uh, central repository in, in the github.com. Okay, so we'll do the same thing here also. So for that guys, I will go to this project location, right click on this project name and select properties, project workspace in my local machine. This is a folder in my local, right click and git bash here. First command guys, what is the first command? We have to say git status to find the changes. All the red color things are need to be added. Git add dot, enter. Again, say git status, they will turn into green. All the red things will turn into green. They are ready for addition. Now say git commit, hyphen uh, Uploading, uploading, uh, uh, uploading, uh, completed, completed, automate, uh, Completed automating scenarios in which feature file in orders feature file done then git push origin master it will upload the code to the github repo Done. Go to github.com to just cross check whether our uh, latest automation code got uploaded or not. Go to the repository. Demo KFOX live project is a GitHub repo. You see, seven commits were there. Last commit was at 23 seconds ago. Just now we did, right? Completed automating scenarios in orders feature file. Click on this commits. 
you see this particular latest code got committed at 39 seconds ago that means it got committed guys so we now have the latest automation code in our uh, demo qfx live project okay fine uh, so we are done automating an end-to-end -end scenario finally for orders orders uh, functionality guys so in the next session we are done automating all the scenarios guys uh, whatever that i want to show as part of the live project whatever the scenarios i want to show as part of the live project i just now completed this is a final scenario which i demonstrated and implemented today okay in, tom uh, in tomorrow session in the next session i will be taking uh, i will be taking like uh, since we have all the code in the github.com since we have all the code in the github.com i will be using jenkins to execute all this code from the github.com okay i will be using jenkins for executing this uh, for invoking this automation code which is there in the uh, this particular uh, repo of the github.com okay that's what we'll do in the real time guys okay once everything is working fine in the local then we'll execute all the automation scripts in jenkins we'll execute all the automation scripts in jenkins guys we'll we'll see that we'll execute all these automation scripts from the code which is hosted in the github repo from jenkins okay using jenkins that's what is our next session so this is for today guys see you in next session bye